Welcome, Wild and Tame Souls, to this episode of Realizing Authentic Wildness. I'm Lucinda Bakken White, and I'm here today with my good friend Elio. Thank you. And I'm super excited because I saw on Facebook that you have a relationship with a wild squirrel. How did you strike up a relationship with this squirrel? What happened? I was walking to my son's school, and on the way there's a huge date palm. There were three little, little squirrels. I was just like, whoa, this is amazing. I got to get my son over here because he loves wild animals too. And he's like, uh, Papa, I want to take him home. Can we take him home? And I'm like, oh my God, I don't want, be you know, like, I don't <laughs> want this responsibility. I have, I have no he doesn't have any idea what all it might take to rehab a squirrel. At one point, we're like, all right, let's do this. So we built a cage, we started feeding, um, and they ate voraciously. And then that night, they really took a turn for the worst. One had gotten so sick that it just wasn't drinking no matter what. It would just, milk would just come out of its mouth. So the next morning, wake up, go and check on the squirrels. One is warm and supple. The other one, not so warm and stiff. And it was just like, uh, it really mm. hit hard that, I don't know, there's something, you know, already just feeling heart connection to these, these mm. little beings, you know, holding them for hours and hours and hours, trying to make sure that they're doing well, and then they didn't. Mm. Um, so we lost that one that first night, and that was hard. And I was right there with my son, and he did, he did really well with it. Okay, so now we have one squirrel, and that first day, he just stayed right here on my chest and just curled up. And I felt, I absolutely felt like his protector and I was his lifeline. Squirrels are so cute. Like I can't believe it. Like uh, before I ever touched a squirrel, they just look like these wiry skittish creatures that would be coarse to touch and um, would bite you and just not a fun thing to have around. But this this little being mm -hmm. is super soft, super cuddly, and then his uh, receptiveness to affection was surprising because they have black eyes. So you can't see where they're looking. We're so used to seeing eyes in a certain way, making stories out of what those eyes mean, but it's so much less with just a dark sphere. Mm -hmm. And, um, but one thing I do notice is the squinching of the eyes, you know, when I rub his ears, rub his head, when he gets into just like, ah, uh, like that I'm wow. bringing him something. Wow. And that's something I didn't expect from a squirrel. I know the story of squirrels much more now and what they're, what they're about and the, the range of emotion and mood. Mm. I had no idea that a squirrel had. They're just like, because uh, we've you know, I've seen them since I was, you know, all my life I've seen squirrels and they're just no big deal to me. But now it's a much bigger deal. Wow, this is such an extraordinary um, story about intimacy and deep connection and having this opportunity to open your senses and not rely just on your eyes and what you see and to touch and feel and to read the body language with a wild animal. A lot of people don't believe that animals are individual sentient beings and that they feel things and they grieve the loss of family members. And this demonstrates that, that they really are mm -hmm. feeling capable of intimacy. Yeah. I love it that this squirrel opened you up and, and there was a perspective shift that happened with you. Now you see the world differently. You see squirrels differently and death even. So he stayed in the house for five weeks. He chose an apron that was hanging on a hook and he climbed up through some other things like a little coat rack for my son and climbed up and then that he chose after just a couple of days. So it was the highest place, the highest most comfortable place in our house was this hanging wow. apron that had a pocket and he oh. chose to live in the pocket. So he lived there for um, <laughs> almost five weeks in that pocket and he's pooping and peeing in my house and so oh, that's becoming, okay. and then he's starting to chew on wires. Mm. So I build him a box, the idea is build him a box that um, raccoon skunks, um, possums can't get him, but he can get in and out and when I tried to transition him into the box, he freaked out. 
So what I did is I brought him back and he immediately went right back onto the wall in the apron. And I was like, what the hell am I going to do? Because I can't have him in here and I can't just force him outside. He needs to make a, a non-traumatic transition. So um, I put the apron in the box. <laughs> so I crumpled the apron up, put it in there, and sure enough, he was fine. Okay, I want to stop right here and ask mm. you. Because I'm about the symbolism in life mm. and animals, how they speak to us and our soul. And I'm really curious, what was going on in your life? I have a tricky relationship with my son. He's got a ton of energy and he's very strong-willed and he's so amazing. And yet our interactions can be really strained throughout the day. But since the squirrel has come to us, it's been a place where we bond together. It's a place where I've seen him grow, respecting this animal in its squirrel nature and not what my son wants this squirrel to be. Wow, I don't know how if any of this relates, but what's coming to me is this whole idea of a cage and then escaping it and then wild versus contained and mm -hmm. domesticated. Mm -hmm. And there was some parallel energy going on there maybe in terms of maybe your son is a little bit more wild and hard for you to contain and that's difficult mm. and he had that same issue going on with the squirrels a little too wild had to be more gentle with it and and allow the squirrel to be himself yeah. i don't know if you feel yeah. any resonance with any of that yeah i like that I, it casts my son in a in a really wonderful light when i think of him just being wild mm. and not enjoying containment mm. rather than mm. uh can you just do what I want you to do. Things were really rough with my relationship with my son at that time, and there, this created such a such a thing that we could bond over. It's almost like having a third that we could care about made our relationship soften. This is like analyzing the dream realm. What do you think the significant message was for this squirrel coming into your life? What was the lesson for you? Do you know, or your son? Well, you know, you're mentioning the box and realizing our own wildness. Um, and what I think about when you say that is um, the specific kind of behaviors that my son displays at school are kind of your typical pull it together kid or who are the who are the parents of that kid that kind of stuff like he's got a wild energy um, but he's intelligent and he's empathic and he's in public school right now and public school only has so much resources to to devote to children like that and public school is a very specific way of running kids i agree with you that we're very disconnected from from the natural world and there's there's almost nothing natural about school and the way that it's set up so my son trying to make it in a system like that um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep on that path or if we need to move over to unschooling unschooling is a way of like how to draw real-life lessons from real life my son being almost forced to go against his nature in this type of environment. Um, and so when I think about squirrel being a pet, that would be like forcing a squirrel to be in an unnatural environment. Doesn't make any sense. So transition out to here, the, the parallel that I could draw is maybe the life lesson on this is that, well, we, transi we transition squirrel to accommodate his real, his authentic wildness or his authentic nature yeah. sometime in the coming years we might need to do that with this mm. seven-year-old squirrel that is my son he's got goosebumps yeah that we need to get him because it's tragic you know he's of the population he's that percentage especially you know being a boy and at times aggressive boy he's in that percentage that is i think the, the least understood in our culture where we just want to stop the behavior and if the behavior continues we want to punish that behavior mm -hmm. and if we are soft around understanding that person we're considered weak mm -hmm. and there's no room for that i feel sad about about um, my son's position and how he doesn't get understood in his own authentic wild nature very, very few people can really understand that because the behaviors that come from that are so disruptive.
When I think of squirrel and just the generic symbolism around a squirrel and what is the authentic nature of a squirrel, of course, they're all individual sentient beings like we mentioned before, but um, squirrels work really hard. They're constantly taking the, the nuts and the acorns and storing them away for winter. They're really, really playful. They're agile, they're fast, they're always moving around. Yeah, and like you were saying, the balance of different things, like it, it, he's very clear. That's the thing, like with dogs and probably less so with cats, we can get them to get on board with our thing, mm -hmm. but with a wild animal, nah. So squirrels, right. like, you know, if squirrel wants to eat, he doesn't want to play. If he wants to play, he doesn't want to eat. If he's building a, if he's building his uh, nest, don't bother him. Like he's he's not going to be like, okay, I'll do your thing. He's just right. doing his thing. One thing about wild animals is they are authentic to themselves. You're not going to see a wolf acting like a squirrel, mm -hmm. and that is a lesson for human beings because we are often inauthentic following a cookie cutter mold yeah. about how to think, act, and behave, and we go against our authentic nature and so I love it that you're allowing a squirrel to be a squirrel and he's teaching you and reinforcing this concept of you know who are you on the inside yeah, yeah. and be yourself yeah uh, we have more available to us as far as connection yeah. with um, natural beings how, yes. how lovely to have relations and also just have interest and respect for other beings and they're not just something to get out of the way if they're not serving us. We actually respect that they are beings and they're doing their lives just like we are. It's not a really domesticated kind of animal, you know? They're not a really good animal to keep inside. Gosh, um, well, neither are humans. This is what's yeah, coming to me. Right, you know, I right. think we're a society that's overly domesticated. Yeah. We place far too much emphasis on our human self and being spontaneous and free and authentic to who you are. The squirrel's a squirrel. I think it's just this brilliant example of balancing domestication and wilderness. I call it realizing authentic wildness in a civilized world. Because before there were psychologists and podcasts and workshops and self-help books, our ancestors looked to the animals as their guides. The animals taught them things like the wolves taught them how to hunt. So you're right, we've lost that connection and that respect for animals and what they can teach us. Wow, what an extraordinary story. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for sharing it with yeah, me. You're welcome. Thank you for being with us today on Realizing Authentic Wildness. If you like this episode, be sure to like it at the bottom and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>